across the nation by a variety of strange airplanes, specially designed barges, and ocean-going ships, the pieces that make up America's moon rocket, arrive at the Kennedy Space Center. Their destination, the huge vehicle assembly building. The two upper stages of the rocket are first put into special stands for several weeks of inspections and tests. While this is going on, the 138-foot first stage is being inspected on the main floor of the building. Then special lift braces are fitted to each end of the stage. And a 175-ton crane moves into position. Its hook is attached to another brace on the lower end of the stage. A second, more powerful crane, riding 45 stories above the main floor, hooks onto the upper end of the stage. And the two cranes set the 287,000-pound stage upright. The larger crane then lifts the first stage some 14 stories high over the steel framework of the building and gently lowers it to the deck of the waiting mobile launcher. Steel arms on the deck grasp the stage and anchor it down. Two service arms carrying fuel lines, communications, and electrical service to the stage are attached. They also enable workers to get inside the vehicle. Work platforms, some as large as three-story buildings, move from the walls of the assembly area, encircling the first stage. They can be adjusted up or down so that technicians can reach all levels of the stage for the inspections and tests it must pass. The second stage is moved from its test cell to the assembly area. The eight-story high, 75,000-pound section is mated with the waiting first stage. The Saturn's 58-foot third stage that will ultimately push the Apollo craft from its Earth orbit into a course for the moon is next. Finally, the brains of the lunar rocket, the instrument unit, is raised to the top of the Saturn V. The smallest of the rocket's stages, this three-foot section, contains the equipment that will control the flight of the rocket from liftoff until the spacecraft heads for the moon. While the mammoth Saturn V is being assembled and tested, similar work on the Apollo spacecraft is being carried on in the manned spacecraft operations building. The three sections of the spacecraft are exhaustively tested here before they are joined together. The lunar module, in which two astronauts will someday land on the moon, is one of these. The module is fitted into a streamlining cover and then mated with Apollo's other sections. The service module is the section containing the primary engine, the electrical power system, and some of Apollo's supplies. Its propulsion system slows the spacecraft into moon orbit and later pushes it from the moon back to Earth. The command module is used by the three astronauts as the command center and home and is the only part of the entire vehicle to return to Earth. After the combined spacecraft has passed literally thousands of tests and inspections, it is taken to the vehicle assembly building to be mated with its waiting launch vehicle, the Saturn V. One final unit is added to the lunar rocket, the launch escape system. Its purpose is to pull the command module free of the Saturn in case of emergency during countdown or early flight. The 36-story high Apollo Saturn V is assembled, but it is still not ready to be launched. More weeks of testing the complete vehicle must be conducted before the Saturn is ready to begin its journey to the moon.